My name is Jan Abel Hoopen Jonks, South Africa's most famous pet psychic. During these crazy times, my clients send me home videos of their mental case pets. The following footage is my readings for this week. Welcome to Yana's Yard. Here we have the upward curled tail of the dog. I don't like a curly tail, not a fan. You can surgically uh, correct that, I would. Psychically, I'm not getting a lot of this dog. It's it's saying the word tutti to me. I'm not, not sure what that means. Maybe it thinks I speak Afrikaans. I don't know. Okay, we've got the backlighting and the puffy little jacket dog here. And Rontel from Durban and uh, just listening and he's telling me, he's saying that the, the lettuce field is ripe for the picking and not to sit him in the lettuce field because it's very unhygienic to have the arsehole of the dog on the on the lettuce. Okay, we have Susie from Cape Town. I've seen this dog around. I know it well. Very weird dog. Uh, always terrorizing the, the baboons that we um, have calmed down. The horrible dog. Bring her in, Debbie, and I'll do some more work. Puppies. Okay, so my client has asked me to choose which one of these two lovely puppies to take home. Um... Dog slut is not a word I would usually use, but that light brown one is definitely uh, playing the field, uh, loves the boys, enjoys the dog dick, as they say. I would choose, it's hard to say really, but it depends what you're into, but I, I would I would probably choose the light one um, if I were you and drown the dark one. The dark one's got that vacant look in its eyes and you'd soon get sick of that. Uh, here we have Stephen from Namibia with his dog Pansel. Um interesting name. If we could go a little closer, I could have a look. Oh, well, that's not Pencil, that's a Pug. Pug's one of the smartest breeds um, there is. Absolute genius, this dog. Uh, he's talking me through some, some algebra at the moment, just a little, uh, some dog algebra. Ah, one of my overseas clients, Brown Nose from Canada. He's wagging the tail there, he's recognised me. Ah, beach dog. I love a dog on a beach running freely in the nature. Can't quite see that one. It reminds me of when I I went for a swim once at the beach as a girl and I got a dog shit lodged in my mouth and I had no choice but to swallow it. Put me right off the beach for life, but these things happen. Okay, another extreme curly tail there. I, do, I don't like seeing the arsehole of the dog, if I'm honest. It's not my jam. Okay, is that the same dog? No, it's a puppy of some sort running towards me, thinking nothing as puppies often do. Not sure who the man in the background is there. Maybe Stephen, I don't know. Might have a few dogs. Okay, same dog, here it is again. Now it's talking to me and it's saying, it's telling me to stop giving it milk. It's not a, it's not a cat, it's saying it's not a cat. Why are you giving it milk? Okay, here we go again. And that's Stephen again, I am assuming, heading off on a walk. I'm I'm getting serial killer vibes from Stephen. Setting up a camera and walking off is quite a weird thing to do. Ah, uh, oh God, is that Susie again? It is. With a flea situation. Okay, she's quite startled there. She's talking to me and she's telling me, she's telling me she's hearing voices and she's hearing them coming out of her paw. That's why she's licking there. She's very, very mentally confused. Okay, that's a German Shepherd, oh God. One of the most retarded breeds there is, walking on the water, case in point. Okay, we have another pug, deep in thought, the genius that he is. And here we have Mr. Cool Guy, getting high on the lavender fields, with his bandana on, very cool dog indeed. Okay, this dog lives under a bridge, it seems. He's talking to me and he's telling me that he killed a small child in order to survive under the bridge. Okay, I'll notify the police about that. Okay, he's just crouching down. He does that when a car goes over because he doesn't want to get caught under the bridge. He's telling me that his guts are full of child meat and he's very, very sick at the moment. He knows his days are numbered uh, once he's caught for his crime. And I've notified the police, that's why he's uh, on edge there. Seems like he... Yes, he's turning because he's hearing the sirens uh, coming towards him. Oh, not sure who that man was. Maybe that's Stephen again. Okay, Susie again, hearing voices in the paw and looking very stressed in the eyes. I can relate, sweetheart. I, I hear voices. My life is voices in my head. 
She's telling me she regrets terrorising the baboons, and, well, I'm, I'm glad of that, because you don't want to mess with a primate. That's never going to end well, I know, firsthand. OK, same dog again, that's Susie. This is a cry for help if ever I've seen one. OK. To the owner, the owner, uh, Karen, is it, uh, look, who, whoever owns you, you need to bring her in for an exorcism. I, I need to sort this dog out, for Christ's sake, please. This dog is possessed. Bring her in. I can't keep watching this. It's not good. Oh, God. Look at the eyes. Oh, thank God. Okay, moving on. A show jumping dog. Is that another German Shepherd, is it? This won't end well, then. Basket of Nashy Pears. Who in God's name thought that this was a good idea? I'm trying to read the dog's mind, but it's gone blank. Common, common thing for a German Shepherd to not be able to transmit anything to, to a psychic. Oh, d oh, another angle, just in case we miss what happened the first time. This is an absolute train wreck. Looks like a bloody kangaroo jumping over there. Another very retarded animal as well, the kangaroo. All marsupials are, actually. Jumping or hopping uh, in general is a, not a very smart dog. Absolute waste of the nashy pears. You've got to be kidding me, another bloody jump. Oh, so it's jumped too soon and I'm getting slight reading of panic in the face of Ah, I see it's going through something. It's gone through a tire of some sort. I thought it was trying to do the pear jump and misread it. Um, sliding those little kangaroo legs through there with a little side manoeuvre. Okay, I don't know what you want me to say here. Congratulations, perhaps. Do you want me to hire your dog to do so? Oh, more. For crying out loud, what in God's name is that? Oh, for crap, that sound... That's the sound that I'm psychically receiving from there he goes. The dingo's got my basketball. Good riddance. See you later. Okay, here we have a puppy on a racetrack fearing for its life. Not a smart place to take a puppy or Formula One tracks. And we have a husky pretending its ears are mountains. Very weird dogs, the husky. Oh, God. Okay, definite suf suffering from depression of some sort, this dog. Um. Bring this one in, please. I need I need to do some Reiki on it. Definitely got the black dog. Poor thing. Oh, look at the face on it. Very happy dog here. Okay, he's telling me... He's saying, sorry about the jizz on the couch and your leg. Not sure what that means entirely. Uh, the mind boggles, but there you go. That's the reading. Here's a pathetic little thing. Tootsie from Durban. Uh, I'm suspicious of the soft focus there. What are you hiding, Tootsie? Maybe an older dog trying to soften the crow's feet. Very very strange footage, this. Oh, Christ. Very wolf-like. Stepping through the pansies to try and seem more pleasant than he is. He's telling me... Okay, he's currently telling me that he wants to bum his friend and he doesn't know how to tell him. Bring this dog in. I need to talk to him. Okay, oh, lovely. Very arty. Very time-lapse. Some sunset with a dog that I can't see properly between you there. He's telling me he's telling me he hates sunsets. That's why he's got his back turned on it. Okay. Another backlit puppy playing on the beach. Very arty shot. Whoever sent this in. I'm not impressed with your cinematography skills. I need to see the dog's eyes. And stop showing off, please. It's no good to me. I need to see the dog to do a... Oh, God. Well, that's actually a wolf. Now, I'm quite good with animals like this. So he's telling me... He's telling me he dreams of killing young boys, tweens particularly. He's saying that he can't stand Pokemon Go, that game, and any youngster caught playing it on his watch, he'll take them by the throat. That's him dreaming of it right now, and he knows that I know. So he's what? Another wolf, less violent one. This one dreams of eating fairy floss at a, at a village fair, having his first kiss on a merry-go-round, holding paws with another wolf or... And perhaps even a, a young human girl. Wolves go gar gar for young girls, apparently, I've heard. Anyway, that's it for my readings this week. Join me next week again for Yonna's Yacht. And now, cats. Dear Yonna, I've been pumping my breast milk and feeding it to my cats for some time. Are they okay with it? Sally from Johannesburg. Okay, just taking a reading from the grey one. Uh, he's telling me he didn't realise it was yours, uh, but he's more than fine with your breast milk and he loves the tangy taste. 
Okay, here we have a working cat sweeping the paved area for the owners. Earning its keep, he's telling me. Great to see cats hard at work. Ah, I know this young white cat here, one of my neighbours in Cape Town. Roger has sent this in. And I'll just take a reading from the cat, okay? Okay, it's quite alarming, but not surprising. He's telling me these flowers remind him of his owner's testicles. And hanging down over the cat, uh, it's a game that they play, apparently. Um, he's saying that his owner his lowers his balls over me, and I tap them with my paw as they dangle. Um, so that's not good at all. Teabagging cats is, is not on Roger, so if you're listening, please stop. Okay, we have a charming feline, if ever I've seen one. Uh, we have a floor-licking cat here. Uh, always a sign of distress. The cat is saying to me, it is saying, where is the finger? Where is the finger, Yana? Where is the finger? Where is, there's the finger. Okay, so it's a game. The cat's playing a game. Uh, yes, reminds me of a, a similar game I used to play with my girlfriend once. Very pleasurable game. Ah, the window cat. Okay, he's telling me, he's telling me that he's fallen out of this window, of this very high window, eight times before, and he's died, and he's on his ninth life, um, but he likes to flirt with danger, and uh, he's telling me if his time's up, his time's up. Um, I can relate. I, I fell out of my treehouse once and uh, thought that was it, and uh, thought my time was up. He's pretending to have seen something there to distract me. Oh, God, don't bloody jump now. Okay, now he's just checking the... Joinery, checking the hinges on the window there, making sure. He's saying it could do with a varnish, and uh, I couldn't agree more. Um, some shaky camera work there from the owner, nervous that he's going to jump. Um, obviously, too far to catch. Oh, someone's dressed their children up to impress me. There's a video from Leanne from Durban of her children with their cat. Leanne's one of my, my wealthy clients, very well styled, the whole room. Um, nothing beats a child in a fedora. Just taking a reading from the cat here, and it's telling me it's a living hell, living with his children, uh, tormented day in, day out, uh, poked and prodded. Uh, the cat's, it's telling me that it tried to smother this, this child as a baby here, and uh, it didn't work. Um, I really feel for this cat. Uh, Leanne, if you're listening, get the children and the uh, the wicker baskets with the wheat away from the cat. Ah, the stroking pussy with a heavily tattooed owner there. I recognise that arm from my Darks on Bikes group. I think it's Liz. The restaurant cat's foraging for discarded food scraps. And uh, this one's telling me that he loves an arancini ball scrap on a, on a Sunday afternoon. Here we have Cody from Botswana. Uh, he loves wine. Um, he's actually off his face in this footage. Uh, it's very, very hard to read a drunk cat, but I'll try. Uh, he's saying, one more wine, you bastard. Um, no need for the language, sweetheart. Alcohol can be tricky with cats. Um, I'd advise one glass of wine for a cat per day. No more than that. Now the drunk cat is, is trying to catch the fluffy stick, and of course its, it's coordination is shot. Uh, cat's talking to me psychically now and it's telling me um interestingly it's telling me that the owners often oil the floor with comedy cat slip oil for their amusement and of course it's a child uh, always the bloody children he's sniffing the comedy cat slip oil he knows they've done it never trust a child with a parquetry floor these two have something nasty in mind for this poor orange beast she's talking to me now and she's telling me that she's she's fearful of what they might do the raised rear end there, sign of terror. Laser pointer on the carpet here, classic. Poor things playing long, trying to keep these devils on side, stop them from taking the, the torment up a notch. And here we go, cats can't skate. That's what I told Tony Hawk when I worked with him. It's not possible. Oh, for God's sake, I've got a good mind to call the police on these Damn children. It's not an axolotl, it's cats don't like fish tanks, for God's sake. Alright, that's all we've got time for. Join me next week for more Yonis Yacht. 
And now, dogs. Here's an aerial shot. Film from a lifeguard tower, perhaps of a uh, sexy couple from Cape Town. And their wonderful little dog, Kevin. Uh, jumping up there, just taking a reading from Kevin. And he's not a fan of the girl there. Uh, teasing him with the ball. New girlfriend, he says. She can't throw a ball. Very uncoordinated. Uh, Kevin's telling me that he always uh, assumed he was in a gay relationship with the shirtless owner. So uh, her, her arrival has not been a welcome one. Uh, I can relate, darling. Unrequited dog owner love is uh, the hardest kind of love. Uh, here we have a uh, dog in a suitcase, clipping the hair. Lucille from Durban, uh, obviously about to embark on a, some international travel. She's had her jabs and about to be loaded on board. Here we have a puppy. Not a fan of the puppy myself. Very, very dumb. Uh, this one's eating its own feces. Uh, yes, I know, we've all tried it, but it's very unhygienic. Ah, the crazy snow digger. A uh, sense of urgency there. And his black fan very fast. Perhaps they found a body. Not sure. Ah, oh, it's Gordon from Cape Town. He's the uh, toast of the town at the moment after his big trip. He's the uh, first dog to circumnavigate the globe on his own, so uh, well done. Here we have Marsha from Johannesburg, suffering postnatal depression. Can't stand its offspring. Tell me about it, darling. I was, I was the same with my son. And there's the absent father. Looks like a herd of feral dog here. And the black one's uh, talking to me and he's saying, Yana, where is my, where is my orange frisbee? Where in God's name is my frisbee? And there it is, in the jaws of a, of a lesbian dog. Looks like this dog's having a nightmare. Perhaps that it's skydiving, falling from the sky, terrified. Wake up, darling. Darling, wake up, it's Yana. You're having a nightmare, sweetheart. Come on, come on, and you're awake. And it's me, Yana, darling. There we go. Oh, the swimming dog. Dogs are the uh, closest relative to the seal. So they evolved from the seal. So he's just uh, getting back to his aquatic roots. He's been out and uh, had a chat to a dolphin. And he's telling me that the dolphin tried to hit on him, uh, which is a classic for a dolphin. Oh, God, Susie. Okay, you may remember Susie from uh, an earlier episode. She came in for an exorcism. Uh, she's hearing voices in the paw. Uh, look, I've done my best. Uh, she's telling me she's still hearing the voices uh, coming from the poor. Uh, the baboons are coming, she's saying. Look out for the baboons. God, it's hard to watch this. Uh, let's bring her in again, Leanne, and uh, I'll try some shock therapy with my taser. Ah, here we have a very happy, shiny dog uh, working on the dog tan there on the banana lounge. Uh, I hope you've sunscreened, darling, uh, soaking up the rays there. Okay, we have a puppy selection decision again. Uh, my clients have asked me which one to keep and which one to kill. And uh, just taking a reading from the light one there. And it's talking to me psychically and it's saying, it's telling me, it's strangely telling me it's attracted to cats sexually, which is uh, not ideal. So yes, I'd definitely keep the dark one and uh, drown that light one. Here we have a couple of sheep just come in from the field for a break. Uh, the one on the right is a ewe, uh, the female sheep, and it's, it's telling its brother it's got a lovely fleece and uh, just licking the lanolin there to moisturise the tongue. It's a classic sheep trick. Ah, so the puppy's been killed. Um, that's, that's the dead carcass of the puppy there. Unfortunately, these things happened, and uh, I'm glad they took my advice. So here we have another... Ah, it's another aquatic dog emerging from the sea. This pup is telling me it's been masquerading as a walrus for the last month, uh, so good on you. Small dog there, large head, deep in thought. Absolute genius. Some uh, arty black and white footage here. Not sure what to make of this. I'm, uh, I'm uh, getting Wizard of Oz vibes. He's telling me he's a, he's a friend of Dorothy and uh, he's on the lookout for tornadoes, so keep it up, darling. Ah, it's Colin from Zimbabwe, one of my regulars. He's, he's telling me he's eating from his bowl there, and uh, the other bowl is his absent wife, Colleen, who he misses dearly. She was uh, trampled by an elephant a few weeks ago. Very sad scene there, but he's telling me he doesn't care, because
but she was a bitch anyway. Ah, a couple of my dogs from the North Pole. I work with a very, very high-profile client up there in the Pole, and uh, can't say who it is. I've signed an NDA, and uh, but I do a lot of work with his reindeer. Let's just say these these two dogs are owned by uh, um, his. Not without giving too much away, they're owned by a couple of elves. Um, the dogs are telling me, they're talking to me now, and they're telling me they're all on track for a for a certain time of year. Uh, hence why they're frolicking and not uh, working in the factory. Um, lovely footage here of the the uh, scenery in the North Pole. Uh, my little doggy helpers there frolicking in the uh, snow. There's a uh, sleigh tracks there on the road from my client, no doubt, trying out his sleigh. And uh, who's this approaching? Maybe his daughter. It's uh, the outfit. The outfit's telling me it's a lesbian of some sort. That's it for this week, my darlings. And, uh, join me again soon for another episode of Yana's Yacht. And now, cats. Hello, my darlings. Isn't this series fun? It's it's quite a hoot for me sharing these these videos with you each week, and I I appreciate the comments, darlings. Uh, perhaps I'll do some merch. Okay, sweethearts, let's get on with this week's cats. Okay, just taking a reading from this feline, and I see it's a it's a very common situation here. People buy what they think is a black cat, and it turns out to be a black panther kitten, and uh, it'll grow up into a full-size panther, and it kills the family. Um, I've seen it time and time again, uh, and that's what we've got here. He's talking to me now, and he's telling me that the children don't realise uh, he will eat them once he's full-size. Um, they've certainly got a grim future ahead of them. Uh, my, my heart goes out to this situation. Orange cat here, being tormented by children, no doubt. Um, he seems on edge, uh, he's telling me, he's talking to me now and he's saying that he's concerned something very bad is going to happen to him, and, uh, very worrying, you can see it in the eyes, and here we go, here it is, the panther is obviously sizing up the orange cat, sizing up the prey, and the orange cat's concerns are very much warranted, um, these panthers are hunters, uh, they will eat a domestic cat, in one foul swoop, usually ripping the head off, uh, decapitation. Uh, that's what that's what he's telling me now he wants to do to the orange cat, and there he is, sniffing the tail meat, uh, imagining slurping that uh, tail in like a piece of spaghetti. Uh, he's imagining what seasoning he might add to the cat meat, and he might pair it with a red wine or, or something of some sort, as panthers are known to do. Very, very distressing scene here. I wish I could help. The orange cat is none the wiser, living in ignorant bliss. Oh God, there's a white one too. Uh, the panther here lining up its prey. He knows I know and he's saying, don't give away my game, Yana. I won't, darling. I've, I've fallen for this myself in the past. The, uh, the misidentification of a young animal leading to disaster. I, I, years ago, I once bought um, what I was told was a dark brown koala bear, moved it into my treehouse, and uh, we became very close. And then as time passed, it grew into a, a very large grizzly bear, escaped and ravaged the town, and uh, horrible scenes. We did lose one gentleman, uh, one of the drunks from the pub, so no huge loss. Uh, but, but I'll never forget the blood-curdling screams that day. There we go, stretching the paw there, dreaming of his of his future orange furry feast. Uh, oh, he, he wants that spaghetti bad. He's saying to me, Daddy wants cat spaghetti. Uh, panthers are terrible and can't be trusted. Oh, God, look at him. It's very sad, poor little guy there, soon to be nothing more than a turd in kitty litter. Very, very sad. Ah, the honky-tonk cat, uh, tinkling the ivories, very musical, uh, play me a tune, white guy, that's, that's what I said to, when I, when I met Billy Joel, one of my celebrity clients, um, nice guy, but very bad breath, this cat's talking to me and it's saying, Yana, I simply have to play 
the piano, but my paws don't have the weight to really, really slam down those notes. He's saying he wants to play Great Balls of Fire, um, but you can only master the intro to Run Away by Kanye West. Just the one note piece. Um, still a good song, nonetheless. And back in life, darling. I'm, I'm very musically retarded myself. And Poor thing. There he goes. That's playing the note from uh, Run Away. Now he's uh, he's throwing up into the vase. I'm sick of it, he's telling me. I don't blame you, darling. Let that vomit out. Well, not, not the most attractive face there. Uh, Roland from Botswana and his flea-ridden friend, Clancy. Uh, not much coming off these two. Mm, okay, we've got a kitten in the bush. Uh, relaxing there. Lovely. And oh, something scared it. Perhaps it's the panther. So, uh, the piano playing cat again on a windowsill. Very distressed here. Clearly lost its marbles over the piano issue. And it's uh, trying to eat its own tail. The cat as a meat is a very, very delicious. I obviously don't myself condone the cat meat industry, of course. But I have, guilty as charged, I have dabbled in some dried cat tail. Very chewy and uh, nutty flavour. Notes of uh, of nutmeg in there. Is that even the piano cat? I don't, I don't know. Okay, is that dead? No. There's a breath there. Still alive. And he's telling me, he's saying, Yano, I'm having a nightmare. And he's, he's saying it's a wedding scenario and he's been forced to marry a human. Oh, darling. Wouldn't be that bad, would it? Concerned Tabby on the floor here. Maybe worried that... Uh, Someone will step on the tail because it's so camouflaged into the lino. Perhaps intentional. Ah, oh, William from Cape Town. Up on the toes. Very homosexual cat, if ever I've seen one. Very theatrical swoot of the tail. Definitely gay. Oh, God, what in God's name's going on here? Very fast moving. It's uh, Jeremy and Punty from Durban. Uh, this is going to trigger my epilepsy. Punty, the black black and white one is telling me she's lost her engagement ring and Jeremy is going to give her what for if she can't find it. Very, very stressful situation here. I can relate, darling. I, I swallowed my mother's wedding ring as a child and we had to sift through my doo-doo for, for weeks. Oh, God help these two. Anyway, that's it for this week's Yana's Yard. Join me for more next week. Bye, darlings. And now, Uncut. Hello, my darlings. This particular episode I'm calling Uncut because uh, I do in my line of work need to go a little blue at times. So, pop the kids away for this one and uh, Yana may get a little nasty. Pet dung beetle here. Very cool guy. And now we have a butterfly called Tracy that one of my clients, Robert, has asked me to read. Uh, as you can see, sucking the juice out of the poo there. Uh, a delicacy in the butterfly world, the poo juice. This must be Robert's finger coming in there. She's telling me... Tracy's telling me that Robert and her are very close indeed, and, well, we can see there that he's uh, parting the lips or the wings of the butterfly, revealing that blue interior. It can be uh, pleasurable for the butterfly receiver, to have those butterfly lips parted. And it's flapping with pleasure there, the flaps there, and uh, she's telling me, she's she's telling Robert to do it again with those flaps. Do it again, Robert. Part my lips. Uh, while continuing to suck on the poo juice. Uh, so it's a great time being had by all. Uh, reminds me of my, my last pap smear, which I, I don't recall getting the results, so I'll have Mercy chase that up. Ah, Robertson coming out again with the finger there, sliding that man finger into the butterfly lips, as they are known uh, in the entomology world. And the flapping is is asking for more. A uh, very intimate scene going on here. Uh, but I have been sent this footage, so I must put my professional hat on and do my readings uh, without getting too aroused. Uh, and the stabbing the poo there, sucking it while begging Robert for more. Very attractive blonde horse here, and she's sent this in to me herself, uh, as horses often do from time to time. She's telling me that she's tired of the whole dumb blonde stereotype thing, and 
so I'll just take a an IQ reading. And yes, as expected, it's quite low, so you are in fact dumb. Ah, oh, some of my VIP clients, Reindeer here. There's uh, Dasher, I can see, and Prancer, and Donner, and Blitz in there. I can't see Rudolph. I, I imagine the Red Nose will be a giveaway. And they're preparing for Christmas Eve, which is coming up, and they they do seem nervous, and I can see why, because here we have a wolf watching the reindeers. He's telling me he's planning to, unfortunately, kill at least one of the reindeers. Uh, he's telling me he's got his eye on Rudolph, and he wants him dead by dawn. Uh, but ideally, he'd like to kill a few, which, of course, would ruin Christmas for a lot of children. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of issues going on here with this wolf I'm picking up... Uh, childhood trauma around Christmas. Uh, he's telling me all he wanted for Christmas was a, was a wolf PlayStation and his father called him a massive loser and uh, all he got was a stick. Hence always hating Christmas and his imminent plan to ruin it with the slaying of Rudolph. Uh, not good at all. Um, the Scrooge of Wolves, I call him, uh, doesn't want to believe in Santa. Very sad wolf. He just needs to believe. Here we have a turtle in a relationship with a fish. Very taboo under the sea. I won't tell anyone. Ah, I think I think we all know what's going on here. Group bear fellatio. Very pleasurable. Very colourful parrot here. With a lovely tongue action there. It's, uh, it's reminding me of my youth in the, in the underground lesbian bars of Zimbabwe that I used to attend in the 80s. It reminds me of, of one particular very colourful girl. Uh, she had me pinned up against the wall. Very similar tongue action. Uh, I was very known in the, the bar scene in those days on the dance floor. Dancing the night away with my strap on on. Swinging it around and looking for love as they say. Scrooge again. Uh, plotting to ruin Christmas. He's telling me he's, he's spotted Rudolph and he'll go in for the kill shortly. Yes, I should text my client and warn him. He could, uh, he could get some uh, sniper elves out there and take down this wolf before any harm's done. It's hard to know whether to intervene in these situations or let nature run its course. Hmm, the orangutan, one of the dumbest animals known to man. He's telling me he needs some conditioner on the hair there. Uh, I wouldn't argue with that. Uh, terrible split ends and... Uh, could do with a keratin treatment on the on that hair there. Close up of a horse face here, Derek from Durban. Uh, very smart animal, the horse. Very large penis. Uh, perhaps that's why they've zoomed in to s spare me the the shot of the engorged appendage. Perhaps there's a human underneath, uh, jerking it off off camera. Who knows? Ah, a snail orgy going on here. All participants having a great time, they're telling me. Again, this uh, reminds me of the lesbian bars in Zimbabwe back in the day. Me and the girls letting our hair down. Enjoying all that the 80s had to offer. Very horny snails here. I've gone very blue again with my readings this week and uh, quite X-rated. I'm, I'm feeling a quiver in the nether regions, I'm not going to lie. Perhaps I, I need a, some time alone in my room after this. I'll get mercy to guard the door and pop my VR headset on. My little parrot friend back again and that tongue's going a million miles an hour. Very much like that young girl I, I spoke of from the lesbian bar. Uh, very colourful lady. So, Sonia, I think it was Sonia. Uh, with a tongue action to die for. She'd pop under my caftan and, and go to town. Yes. You're picturing it now, I know, and I know what you're thinking. Do you trim your nether regions, Yana? People always ask, and I say, darling, I'd need a chainsaw. The curtains do match the drive stylings, so, as you can imagine, very, very bushy indeed. Uh, you need a pick comb to find your way in. Ronald the ostrich from Nigeria here, telling me he dreams of having teeth one day. Anything's possible these days, darling. I'll put you in touch with a bird dentist, I know. Ah, the terrified reindeer awaiting the, the kill from the Christmas-hating wolf. Uh, looks like Christmas is going to be off this year, guys. Uh, my client is a very emotional man. I don't imagine he'll recover from the bloodshed anytime soon. 
just when you thought the year couldn't get any worse. Let's see how this unfolds. And that's it for this week, my darlings. I love you all to the moon and back. Signing off for Yana's Yard.